Hello, Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how to not only set up a Stripe account for a customer, uh, I'm going to also show you how to save their uh, card information within Bubble so that they can use their credit card for uh, subsequent uh, or multiple transactions. So let me do a, a quick demo here. I'm going to create an account. So we'll call this one Jane Buyer. Test.com and Jane Buyer, name on credit card. And then the way that uh, Stripe has it set up in their test environment is for the credit card information. Uh, it's a, s a sequence of four twos uh, 16 times like that. And create an account here. So Bubble is going through working with Stripe to create this user's account and their credit card information. And there we go. So now we have this uh, buyer Jane Doe credit card account has been set up. And let's just quickly pop over here to Stripe. And it's probably doing a little bit of a refresh. Let's see here. It does take a, a moment or two. There, Jane Buyer. So there we go. We have Jane Buyer within Stripe. And that is Jane's customer ID. And I'm going to bounce over here to the database and do a refresh. There's Jane Buyer. Okay, so now I'm getting ahead of myself a little bit, and I'll come back to this. But I just wanted to show you that the customer information, uh, so GXS for the last few digits, GXS. And then there's also this credit card information, DR8F and DR8F. So Stripe has gone and created this user um, and their credit card information. And I'm just going to come over here and do a quick, let's see, one, two, three, four, and five, six. And right now the card has been charged. I'm going to come over here to Stripe and look at payments. And there it is from Jane Buyer. Okay, so in a matter of seconds here, we've gone, we've created a user account. And uh, within the Bubble app, we've gone and created the account, the customer within Stripe. And we've done a transaction using that uh, customer's credit card. So let's go back uh, into the design here and see how we did this. So basically, I have this simple uh, pop-up here for creating a user account, uh, username, uh, password, and their first name, last name, name on the credit card, the credit card number. And so I'm going to slow down here on the credit card number. And just the important part on here is that the content uh, format needs to be text numbers only. So we get all these choices. So make sure it's text numbers only. And then the other thing is you want to limit the number of characters. So this isn't checked by default, but you want to check it and click uh, or type in a uh, maximum number of 16 digits. And then this should not be empty. And then over here, I've basically got the months and then the years, I've just typed those all in. And then for the CVC number, so maximum number of four. There are some credit cards apparently that uh, will go up to four digits. Some are three. Um, so again, text numbers only for this. The other thing to note on here is that we've got this Stripe JS. Now over here, let me see if I can find it. Where is Stripe JS? Right here, Stripe Token. So you want to click on that, 
and just drop it onto your your uh, wherever on your screen here it's in a pop-up when you actually go and run the app uh, this doesn't show it's it's not visible uh, but it is it is there in your app and I do want to go and show this right here I took kind of a snapshot from my plugin page so my plugin settings over here uh, there is uh, keys development keys um, I've got those kind of hidden over here but the one thing I want to point out um, is you get these keys from the Stripe account. So you go and you set up your Stripe account and you're going to see in the dev environment, you're going to get some keys and one of them is going to have a prefix of PK test and the other is going to have a prefix of SK test. Now the thing that's important to note is on using the Stripe.js uh, plugin that this uh, authorization here, you want to put bearer in front of it so type in bearer uh, make sure you have that uh, if you just put sk test and so forth without bearer then uh, you'll get some uh, errors so just make sure that you do have that in there um, let's see what else here so again these are all standard I'll, I'll put a pointer to another video that kind of walks through in more detail how to set up uh, user accounts I really want to focus down here on setting up the uh, the credit card information for this user and then I've got this create and close button. And over here, so I've got Stripe.js platform create a customer. And to get that, you go over to plugins. And then you'll see there's a lot of different Stripe.js options on this. Some of them, a lot of them are with platform. And some of them are with seller. What you want for this one? is Stripe.js platform, create a customer. Where is it? Create a customer right there. So this is the one you want to go and use. Okay. And on this one, I've already got it set up. And I've basically got my uh, input uh, username uh, value. So it's just the input field over here. So I'm using that as the input. And then this description is, is optional. I'm just putting in the, their username uh, is a customer. I just type that in. Um, so you can put in whatever you want or you can leave it blank. Sign up the user. So this is, uh, so count, sign the user up. Right here is the uh, step that you want to add. And you just put in, uh, add in the, uh, Username's value for the email, the email value for your um, uh, username value and password. And I do have it checked off to verify password, remember the email, and then the first name, last name, and ID. So again, I've got other videos that I'll show you in more detail, walk through this, and I'll, I'll put a link to that. Um, the thing to focus on here is this customer ID. So this customer ID is taking a result from uh, step one, and in step one, we're doing this create a customer. So it's basically uh, creating a customer ID. So when I click on this, I get all these choices. Let me just move this up a little bit. So result of step one, I get all these different choices here, okay? And this is from the plugin. And what I need is the ID, and that's basically it. And what this is going to do, I'm going to jump to the database for a second here. Data types, user. So I needed to create two fields for this. Customer ID, and that's basically Stripe's customer ID uh, for the user. And then customer credit card ID. So this is actually the card ID. Um, so these will be saved information, and then the plugin in Stripe will use that so that for future charges from the user, um, they can go and instead of entering in the credit card information again, they can just go and um, take it right from the database here. Okay, back to the workflow. So the next thing we want to do is convert card to Stripe token A. All right, let me show you how to do that one. This one's a little bit different. So instead of under plugins and so forth, this one is under element actions. So don't look for it in plugins, look in it for it in element actions. Convert card to Stripe token A. Okay, and so you have all these fields you need to fill out 
And I've already done that over here. And so we've got the input credit card uh, name. And we've got the drop down for the month. And we've got the drop down for the year, the CVC value, and then the card hold uh, name. So this is basically the uh, first name and the last name. We go over here, first name and the last name here. And so that's how we fill in those fields. Uh, the other thing is you want to make sure, depending on what country you're in and so forth, but uh, you'll want to put uh, US or whatever the country code may be. And Stripe has a list of these country codes as well as the currency codes. So you want to make sure that those are in there as well. Um, let me see here. I've got the. Okay, I've done this conversion to create the Stripe token. And then I just basically hide the pop up and reset the pop up values. The other thing you want to put in here that you need to put in here is this Stripe token A for card has been created. And that's basically. Uh, where are you? Stripe uh, has Stripe token for a card has been created. So you want to pick that. And I'm actually going to delete it because I already have it in place. And it's Stripe token A. If you had more than one Stripe token, you probably only have one Stripe token, but you'd see a list of them. But Stripe token A, that's a default value. Bubble will automatically put that in there for you. And uh, basically, oops, I clicked the wrong one. Stripe token A. And did I delete the wrong one? So this is what happens when I kind of copy and paste. Okay, here we go. There it is. This is the one I was looking for. Stripe token A card has been created. So the first step is Stripe JS platform create a card. In this one, we come back over the plugins, platform, and create a card. There we are. Create a card. So now you see that we have this um, uh, cust and toke, okay? Customer and the token. I'm gonna come back over here, I'm gonna delete this, come back over here. And so what we have is a current user's customer ID, okay? So current user's customer ID. And then for this one here, we wanna pick this Stripe token, card token. And that's basically how we get this uh, set up for creating a card. Now make change to a user. And basically we want to go to the current user here. And to, to choose this, just to kind of quickly show. So uh, data, make changes to a thing, current user. Again, I'm going to delete this, go back over here. And customer credit card ID is the result of step one. Stripe JS platform, and then the ID. So again, similar to the other step uh, that we did earlier, you want to take the result from step one. In this case, we're creating a card. The other one, we're creating the customer. And we want to put that customer, or the credit card ID rather, in this step, um, assign it to that current user. So when we go to the database here, again, customer credit card ID, and then the app data for this user is right here. So that's the, the ID. And let me go back over here. So then I have this uh, simple alert message that basically says that the uh, credit card was set up correctly. Now I do want to come over here so Stripe A token couldn't be created. And you want to put this in, and again, it's over here. Stripe token couldn't be created. You want to put this in here so that in the event that a user um, uh, puts in an invalid um, expiration date or their credit card number isn't correct, they didn't put enough digits um, and so forth, when it goes through and processes in Stripe, they do whatever magic that they do on their end. And if something is wrong, then you're not going to get the Stripe token cre uh, A created for that credit card. And so you want to just put a message up there that tells the user that, hey, there's something wrong here. Um, you need to go get that fixed. 
So that's basically it for setting up and creating these, uh, the credit card and the user within Stripe. Now, all I've done over here just um, for an example is have an input field of current type currency. Got all these choices again, so currency. And then I have this uh, pay amount work uh, button to kick off this workflow. And all I've got here is this Stripe JS platform charge payment to a customer's card. So let me just show you quickly. Uh, plugins, platform, charge payment to a customer's card right there. A lot of this is, is filled out for you. Or pre-filled, I should say. I mean, you'll want to change some of it. The thing to, uh, to be aware of that, um, you see here, amount in cents. It's kind of Okay, there we go. If I overlay it, uh, I just had it and it just disappeared. Okay, body amount in cents. So the number you put in here is in cents. So if you wanted um, uh, one dollar, um, you're going to have to. It's um, you need to put this one hundred in here to convert it over to dollars. And it's kind of a little bit of a quirk. Um, I sometimes forget to do it and I get weird numbers in my testing, but you want to do uh, input values, uh, paid value, and then you want to multiply it. So value, and you get these choices here, times 100, and I just type that in. And then you get the right value, currency code, US dollars. Um, I think the value for CAPTCHA now is, tr is false. You want to make sure that this is true. I've seen some uh, earlier testing where it was false and my, my uh, charges weren't coming through correctly. Um, and it turned out because I had this as false, you wanna just type in true for that. The customer ID, again, current user, customer ID, and then current user, customer credit card ID. So this is the source here. So the customer ID here, the source, or the, the credit card ID is what goes in this field here. And so that basically is going to take um, not directly the credit card information of that user, but it's going to go off to, to Stripe and use the customer ID and the credit card ID, and then it'll do its magic again on the Stripe side, and then it'll charge um, 100 or the whatever the price is uh, for that user. Then I just have another alert that says that the credit card was charged successfully, and then I just reset the uh, inputs there as well. So let's see here. Just run this again. And so let's say 89.99 pay amount. And it's crunching through, and yeah, my card was charged successfully. Now if I go over here, again, it takes a second or two for it to come across. Go back to payments. There it is, $89.99 by Jane Byer. And then you can click on it and get a bit more details, uh, details such as the fees that uh, Stripe charges you uh, for the transaction. Again, this is all in the test environment, so viewing test data right now. Um, let me go back to payments. So this is how you go and set up uh, the account, a user account, uh, with their credit card information and save their credit card information, and then a quick demo on charging their saved credit card. Um, so hopefully this is a useful video if you're starting to use Stripe and setting up accounts. Um, this is for the transactional or one-time charges. Uh, if you have any questions, certainly leave me a comment below. If you like this video, I do appreciate the thumbs up. And I do have more videos uh, coming. So if you subscribe to my channel, you'll get notified by YouTube when those become available. Thank you for uh, watching to the end.